Okay, I'm trying a new setup today, so that's why I'm a little late hopping on here. Um, we're going to see how this works. Whoop. Let me turn it down on the computer. There we go. Okay. I'm going to turn my sound off. Okay. All right. I've got my camera, I mean my phone, on my new setup, which is on my little arm that I got that attaches to my table. And I'm thinking that this will allow me to flip the camera around easily to show you guys what I'm doing um, more specifically, you know, when we get into the, the specifics of everything. Um, let's see. Oh man, I was trying to print. See, I'm just having all kinds of issues today. Um, I was trying to print the pattern out so that I don't have to read it on the computer. And I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm going to turn this so you guys can actually see me while I work on this. Let's see. Oh, it's making me do that. That's crazy. Okay. Well, I'm going to need to, let's see. Okay. I have to replace this ink cartridge. That's a fun adventure. But I think I've got one right here. Let's see. If I don't, we'll have to audible. Oh, I do. Okay. This shouldn't take too long. Sorry, guys. Life happens, right? Well, let me know in the comments uh, if you are following along today, if you've picked out your yarn, because I want to know what yarn everybody's using. Uh, I am super excited to see what you guys are going to be working with. Um, let's see if I can even remember how to replace the ink cartridge. That would be fun. Let's see. I think it's right here. Aha! I found you. Okay. Now if it will let me actually... There we go. Get this ink cartridge out of here. Put the new one in. Okay. I think that's all I had to remove. And then we're gonna put that down in there. All right, it's replaced. Let's see if it actually acts right today. <laughs> I literally left that to print while I was getting coffee and I was like, oh, I'm going to come back in and it'll all be printed out and wonderful. Okay. Let's see what everybody's saying while I'm, while I'm waiting. Got a lot of people today. Hello everyone. I see Terry. Um, she bangs drums. Hello. Hey, Dawn. Sindra's here. Stephanie. Ellen. Hello. Nancy is here. She's working and watching. Uh, create beautiful garments. Hopefully one day I can make yours. Of course you can, Nancy. Of course you can make the garments. This is why we're doing this live. Uh, Ellen is using Hig yarn and slate blue. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I can pronounce that, but hello in Welsh from Emma. I'm going to try this crochet along. I don't have any bulky, chunky weight yarn, so I guess I'll have to wing it. So this one only calls for a size four weight yarn held double. So if you have, if you have, if you want a stash bust, you can use whatever you have in your stash that's a size four. Um, oh, and of course now my printer wants to run maintenance. Okay, well, let's talk about this pattern real quick and let me go through what you need while the printer is figuring its life out. Um, I am going to be using Karen Chunky Cakes for mine and a 10 millimeter hook, which I also need to find. Let's see. Ah, so I've got my 10 millimeter hook here. 
So you can see the 10 on the bottom, oh, this way. So Karen Chunky Cake says it's a size six, but if you do the wraps per inch measurement on Karen Chunky Cakes, you're gonna get closer to a size five. So, and now I'm out of paper. I just can't win today with the printer. Let's see. This is real life, guys. Oh, come on. I'm gonna take it. I don't wanna come out of here. I'm telling you, I try to be prepared and not so much. I only need to print three pages. You could have printed it in black and white. Silly printer. Yeah, I loaded paper. Give me the rest of my pattern. Okay, we are finally ready. <laughs> All right, so this is the printed printable version of the Dobby cardigan. So it doesn't have all the pictures and all the extra ink, which is something people had been asking me for for a while. Um, also, if you missed it, uh, I have updated the Dobby cardigan to be fully size inclusive. Okay, so my first Dobby had from, I think, like a small to a 2X. Um, it now has my regular sizing for all my new patterns, which is an extra, extra small slash extra small. That's the first size to a 4X slash 5X. Okay. So what's interesting is I didn't do an additional test for this sizing change. So you guys are kind of going to be testing this along with me to make sure that it works. Now, all of the sizing is based off of the Craft Yarn Council sizing. So it should be correct. Um, but if you do happen across any, you know, grammatical errors, issues, um, please be sure to reach out to me so that I can update the pattern. Um, but this is the print friendly version. Now, if you bought the Dobby cardigan uh, before, I think three or four days ago, okay, so if you bought it weeks ago, months ago, back when I first released it even, um, you can send me a message on Etsy and that way I can verify that you've already bought the pattern and I can send you the new version. You can purchase the new version if you want to. That's a great way. If you, you know, just want to show support, you can buy the new version, but you don't have to. You can send me a message. I'll send you the new one. Um, and the print friendly version is available as well with the new, um, the new one. So you'll have two downloads if you purchase it on Etsy. Okay, so if we go through this, the first thing that I have listed is the, the measurements. So you can kind of help decide which size you want to make. Um, I am going to be making the extra small slash small size. Uh, the first time I made the small slash medium, and that was back when I used Furl's Merino wool, uh, which is a four weight. So I held the two strands together. Um, and let's see, 10 millimeter yarn. You can use two strands of a four weight yarn. And I thought about using like a lily sugar and cream in the cotton, um, but I was a little overwhelmed trying to choose my colors. So I decided to use a color changing yarn and go with one strand of a size five. So you can either use two strands of a size four or one strand of a size five. I still would recommend checking your gauge. Um, I'm not going to do that on here, but I do have a video on my YouTube channel of how to check how to make a gauge swatch and how to make sure that you have the same tension as I do. I tend to have a pretty tight tension. Um, a lot of my testers have to go down a hook size to match my gauge. Um, but with this pattern, you know, if it's a little big, it'll just be a little oversized. If it's a little small, it'll be a little more fitted. So it won't be too, too bad because it's a pretty basic cardigan pattern. Let's see, yardage. So for this pattern, the smallest size, extra, extra small, is 1,100 yards. Now, this yardage is for holding two strands together, okay? So if you're only using one strand of a size five, you can cut the yardage in half, okay? So that's what I'm going to be doing. So for me, I will need half of 1,400, so I'll need about 700 yards, which I'm pretty sure I have because these are really big cakes. Uh, these have almost 300 yards. So I'll have more than enough with, with just this. Um, let me hold this up for you guys so you can see the yardage. 
listed. So if you're not purchasing the pattern, you can see this information at the top. This breaks it down really well. So you've got your sizes, your hook, your yardage for each size, your gauge, um, and then the full pattern is the one that has all the photos. So if you need a photo tutorial, you can purchase that pattern there. Um, and if we go up a little bit, this is where we're gonna start. The sweater body cardigan is created using two strands of size four weight yarn. Um, and let's see, okay, so I am missing a couple of comments. Let's see, uh, She Bangs Drums is using basic DK from a local supermarket held double. I think you talked to me too. I think you said you're using it from Aldi and our Aldi never has yarn. It has other crazy stuff, but it never has yarn. Um, met gauge with a six millimeter hook, exactly. So some people will have to go down a hook size. Let's see. Emma says, what about one strand of weight four? So at one strand of weight four, you are either going to get a much holier cardigan, so it'll be more airy and have more visible holes in it, or you're going to struggle to match gauge because some people can't hold tension when it's looser, if that makes sense. So um, I would definitely recommend two strands of size four, or if you have like a four and a three, you could play around with that, you know, a strand of four and a strand of three. You could do that as well. Vera is new to the group. Hello, Vera. Uh, and what's the biggest size? The biggest size is a 4X slash 5X. And that is a bust size of 58, bust circumference of 58 inches. Uh, I'm going to be going with the extra small, small, uh, which is 30 inches. And actually, I think I need to go with the small medium because my bust is a little bigger than that. So I think I'm at like 32 or 33. So I'm gonna go with the small medium. I think that's a smarter move to make sure that this fits. Okay, so starting out now, this pattern has, um, has instructions for striping. I'm not gonna do the striping because I'm using self-striping yarn. But if you have seen, let me show you guys the last one. Oh, let's come down here. When I first created this cardigan, so you can see the striping and the color changes. So this is the hood, but you can see the color change striping. So we would start down here with the blue, purple, pink, yellow, and then um, I added green as a contrasting color on the front, complementary color on the front. So that is how the striping is listed, but you do not have to do that. You can use color change yarn. Someone says their Aldi has it multiple times a year, which is awesome. That's what um, we have a place called Ollie's, which is a, like a discount outlet that I often tend to find yarn at, um, but not my Aldi, not ever my Aldi. So not even like the little kits. I figured maybe the little kits would, would be there. Okay, cheers. I've got my tasty beverage. I've got my hook and I'm ready to get started. Um, I did check my gauge just to be sure. I didn't do a full gauge swatch. I just like made a couple of rows to make sure that it was at least somewhat close to what it needed to be. And I'm gonna set this on the floor. And I think I'm gonna turn myself, I'm gonna turn myself this way. So I'm gonna pull you guys around. Let's see if that works. So I'm really, um, I'm learning how to use this little arm. Okay, so I think that works. Someone says they love Ollie's. It's Ellen. Ellen loves Ollie's. That's where she got the yarn she's using. Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely nice. And I promise I'm going to get better at this, you guys. I'm still learning how to use this apparatus. I think that's pretty good. Let me back it up just a little bit more. And today, I don't think I'm going to need to flip the um, camera at all because it's all pretty simple stuff. Um, there we go. Let me back.
back it up just a little bit more. I'm trying to get it perfect. Once I really get this down, I figure I won't have to mess with it as much anymore. All right, so I've got my yarn. Okay, and I'm gonna come over here and I can see myself in the background. <laughs> Let me pop this chat out and I should be able to actually see that. I can minimize this, maximize my chat, turn my computer so I can see it. We're getting this all fixed today. So really help me when we do these in the future too. And I can see the time. Okay. We're not too, too, too far. We got 20, we're 20 minutes in and I haven't even started, but that's okay. We had some technical difficulties. Okay. So I'm going to be ignoring the color changes. And for me, I'm going to be starting and little tip. If you are new to following patterns, this is a great way to start to learn a little bit more on how to follow them. Um, something that a lot of people do, and actually let me get an actual highlighter. Where are my highlighters? Let's see if any of you guys have a big bin like this of all of your coloring crap. I know there's highlighters in here. I just need to find one. Um, at least I thought there was. Yeah, there's a highlighter. Got a nice green highlighter. Okay. If you're new to following patterns, Something that you can do is highlight the instructions for your size. So I'm going to be making the small slash medium, which is the third size. So it's going to be the third um, instruction in the parentheses. So let me highlight that and then I'll show you guys what that looks like. But this is a great way for you to stay focused and on track and not miss your instructions or misread the instructions. One, two, three. I'm just going to try to get through the back panel today. That's going to be my goal. So it'll be a really simple, really simple one today. Not any crazy, not any crazy things. All right. So let me show you guys what this looks like. All right. So I have gone through and highlighted the third number. Oh, that's the fourth number. See, I already messed it up. Now I need to like cross that out because that'll confuse me. Okay. Is that the only one? No, of course it's not the only one where I screwed up. Here we go. Okay. Oh, I just haven't had enough coffee today. All right. So you can see one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's what that means, especially, like I said, if you're new to following patterns, you'll start with your smallest size here, and then you'll have the next sizes up. So this is extra, extra, extra small, slash, extra small, extra small, slash, small, small, slash, medium, medium, slash, large, large, slash, XL, and so on down the line. So grab you a highlighter, highlight the portions that you're going to be following to keep you on track. And the same thing here. So for rows... Sometimes you'll see this on the rows. I've got rows 28 to 32, and for the next size, it's also 28 to 32, but as you get higher up, you'll see a 33. So for the medium large, you would go from row 28 to row 33, okay? That's what that means. And then you'll also see sometimes it will be grouped like this, rows 2 to 5. Uh, no, that's not right. Where is it? Right here. Rows 6 to 14 or 6 to 14, 6 to 14, 7 to 15, 7 to 15, eight to 16. So sometimes you'll see it listed that way as well. So there's multiple ways you'll see it listed, uh, but that's what that means. All right. So I am going to be starting by chaining 45. All right. So chaining, uh, the, um, the number of chains you'll need for each size, starting with the smallest is 35, 39, 45, which is the small medium. 49 for medium large, 53 for large XL, 59 for XL 2X, 63 for 2X 3X 4X, and 67 for 4X 5X. Oh, that's not right either, is it? 7, 8, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm missing one. What am I missing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm missing a size. 
Okay, I'm going to have to look into that when we get off of here. Because I've only got eight sizes listed. Yeah. Let me see. Let me look at my notes really quick. Okay, this will tell me what we're missing. Because I had to write a whole bunch of notes to update the sizing. See, this is why it's important to do testing. All right, so I should be starting... The very first size, I should be chaining. Okay, I'm missing the very first size. So it, unless you're making an extra, extra small. Uh, so I'm going to have to move that up because the extra, extra small, I should be chaining 31, then 35, then 39. So I need to be chaining 39. And I will get this updated. So if you're following along with the newest pattern on the very first sections of this, and it's not missing later down the road. Further down, there, there are nine numbers listed. There should be nine. Um, so yes, so if you are doing the extra extra small, which looks like someone is, you're gonna start with a chain of 31, which means that your back panel is gonna be 30 across, okay? Because you always chain one more than you need on the back panel. So I am going to be chaining 39 and I'm going to go back through and recircle since I highlighted the wrong one since I was missing a size. Let's see. All right. And this should be 30. Yep. So I will update that. Okay. Now we can finally get started. I'm telling you, it's just been a morning. And I'm so excited about this. So I'm sorry it didn't go a little more smoothly. All right, so I'm gonna start by chaining 39. And make sure if you've got um, comments, let's see if I'm missing anything over here. Um, Julie, good morning, Julie. I hope you'll hang out for a little while. Uh, let's see. Not just a yarn hoarder, a highlighter and marker hoarder as well. Yes. It's not too bad though. It's all in that little bin. So that, I think that's pretty good. Um, erasable pins and highlighters are your friend. True. I, I don't have, I've never had um, erasable highlighters before. Yes. And I, yeah. No tech editing the pattern. I know. Well, I was missing a whole size. I don't know how I missed that. Okay, so let me chain 39. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 29. All right. So I have chained 39. That's what it looks like. And then from here, I'm going to be and the next um, row, so the first set of instructions says chain, and then it tells you how many to chain, which is what I just did. And then the next set of instructions is the actual first row. So row one, half double crochet, which is HDC. So the HDC stands for half double crochet into the second chain from the hook, and then half double crochet across. So what that means, you've got your chain. This is just for our newbies. Okay, you are going to have a stitch that is right here next to the chain, this very first one. Okay, you're not gonna work into that one, you're gonna work into the next one. It's the second chain from the hook. So we're gonna place a half double crochet stitch into this second chain. So I'm gonna do that. And then when it says half double crochet across or HDC across, you're just gonna place half double crochets all the way across. Now, since you skipped that very first chain next to the hook that means if you had a chain of 31 and you skip one you should have 30 half double crochet stitches across okay 
Now I chained 39, so I'm gonna end up with 38 half double crochet stitches across this, okay? Um, all right, and I'll show you guys really quick what I was missing. I know this looks like craziness right now, um, but you can see right here, this little 31 was supposed to be in front of the 35. That gives me all my, my full nine sizes. I was missing that extra, extra small size starting here. And then on the next one, there should be a 30, uh, a 30 right here next to the 34. Um, and same thing here and here. So that's where that very first size was missing from that. So that should be 31, 30, 30, 30. So your back panel for the extra, extra small will be 30 across. Okay. And then I'm working this third size, the 38. Um, Emma says, is this chain just the width of the back panel? Yes. Yes, this is the width of the back panel. So we're literally starting at the bottom of the back panel and working our way up. So this is how wide my back panel is going to be. All right, I've placed my first half double crochet. So I'm gonna start working half double crochet stitches now in every single stitch across. And you can see here how that's coming together. I'm just placing my half double crochet stitches along the chain. And this is a really pretty pink color. I'm really excited about this chunky cake. I actually purchased the this color um, the same time that I purchased the yarn that I used for my very first Tonks hoodie. So if you guys have been following me for a minute and you've seen my Tonks hoodie pattern, the purple and pink one, okay, because I do have one that's like purple and green and blue, but the purple and pink one was the very first one I ever made. And that one used Karen Chunky Cakes in like a purple ombre. And the same time that I bought that purple ombre was the time that I bought this pink, uh, what is it? Pink, teal, and lime green Chunky Cakes. So I'm really excited to finally get, use it for something because it's been sitting in my stash for a minute. Uh, and, and I feel like the Dobby Cardigan is great for stash busting because you can use the size four yarn. So like if you have a lot of three and four weight yarn lying around, you can double it up. And and with warmer weather coming, um, last week seriously felt like summer here, so I'm ready for the warmer weather. Um, but I figure that this pattern, it's a lot easier to use some lighter weight yarns like cottons and linens and bamboo blends, all of that stuff. You can, you know, double up the yarn and then you'll have, you know, a, a more spring and summer friendly cardigan, despite it still being a little chunky, you know. All right. I am almost to the end of my first row. I feel like half double crochet stitches are definitely easier for me to work. Like it's easier for me to get into a groove when I'm working on them than it is for single crochet and double crochet. Uh, half double crochet has always been my favorite. You see it a lot in my patterns. So if you haven't bought a lot of my patterns and uh, you decide you want to, you're, you're going to see a lot of those colors. I mean, a lot of that stitch. All right. All right, I'm to my last little chain space here, placing the last half double crochet. And there we go. There is my first row of half double crochet stitches. Woo! Okay. So if you are ever concerned because you don't want to do a gauge swatch, the easiest way for you to go ahead and tell if you're, you know, kind of on track is to finish your first row. And I'm going to lay my first row down on the table. I'm going to grab my measuring tape right here. And according to the gauge, I should have about nine stitches per four inches. So since I already have a row of finished stitches, I can go ahead and pull my measuring tape out to four inches and I can place it down at the edge of a stitch and I can count across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'm at about eight and a half. So I'm not right on, um, but I don't want to use another one. So. <laughs> Um, I guess that would mean I would need to go down a hook size. Is that right? So that my stitches would be smaller and that would give me nine instead of eight and a half. 
but I'm going to stick with this. It might be a little bit bigger than the one that I have, but that's okay. All right, so we finished row one. Rows two through nine read the same set of instructions for all of the all nine rows, two to nine. Um, so all eight rows, it's two to nine. Um, you're going to chain one. So I ended my, my row, and I'm actually supposed to turn first. So I ended my row. I'm going to turn my work around. I'm going to chain one. And then from here, I need to place half double crochets all the way across, okay? And that should read, based on the sizing, starting with the smallest, the extra extra small should have 30, the extra small would have 34, the small would have 38, medium 44, large 48, XL 52, 2X 58, 3X 62, and 4X 66. And remember, I do the slash sizing. So it'll be 4X slash 5X is the 66. Let's see, I had half double crochet is my favorite to stitch too. Um, love how easy and forgiving my patterns are. Yes, they usually are. Even, even if you are off by a little bit, it's just gonna be more of an oversized fit versus being completely wonky. Okay, so now I'm gonna start putting my next row together. So row two, all right. I also like that half double crochet stitches are easier to see the rows. It's a lot easier for me to count my rows and keep track than, um, I feel like the worst is single crochet back and forth because you've got the, I guess one side is a regular single crochet, but then if you flip it over, it's considered like a crab stitch. And I feel like when those are alternating, like if you're going back and forth across a row and turning your work, to, to me, it's very difficult to see, um, to see, to count rows. It's very difficult for me to count my rows when I do that. Okie dokie. I'm actually getting to my first color change with this yarn. So that's fun. It's a pretty quick, it's a pretty quick color change. So I don't know if it's gonna stay that way because I started with the pink. So it may um, it may have just been a quick initial color change. I'm interested to see how much of this fuchsia before it changes. You guys can see the fuchsia change there. I like when the yarn changes color for me and I don't have to deal with trying to match colors and pick out multiple colors and all that fun stuff. Sometimes it's fun, but a lot of times it just makes me second guess myself and then I take forever to decide what I want to do and color changing makes it easy. I don't think I've ever cut my color changing yarn to make it change at a certain place. Um, I know some people like to do that too. So if you buy color change yarn and then you um, cut each color. So in this case, instead of allowing it to change here, I would have cut a color here and attached the new color on the edge. Let me know if any of you guys have done that. I haven't, um, have not tried to do that yet. Okay, I'm at row three. Now, all of my patterns for simplicity say that you need to turn your work and then chain one to start your row. I usually chain one and then turn my work. I don't think it really matters what you do because I've done both. But if you see me, I'm, I, you know, I tend to, when I kind of get going, um, I tend to chain one and then turn instead of turning and then chaining one. But it's, it's simpler for the pattern to do it that way. But I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to turn my work. And then I'm going to start my next row of half double crochet. So it says that I'm going to repeat this to row nine. But the only reason that I'm not, the only reason it says that on here is because of the color changes that are written in. So um, I'm actually going to be doing 
32, is that right? Yes, so once you get to the color change, the fourth color change on the back panel that's written into the pattern, then it's back up to nine sizes. So it looks like I only left out the first size on the very first part of the back panel. Um, and a reminder, if you have purchased the Dobby pattern, and if I've already, I know I sent a few people the updated version, send me a message on Etsy after this is over or right now, <laughs> um, and let me know that you need the updated version because I'm going to need to fix this because I left out the, um, I left out that first size. Uh, send me a message on Etsy and I will send you the updated version once I get it um, fixed today. So I'm going to do that once I get off this live. So sorry about that. Again, that's what I get for not doing a full test, but I was so excited to do this live uh, crochet along that I knew I didn't have, I wouldn't have had the time for someone to test it even quickly, uh, but I probably could have had someone look over it. That would be the smart thing to do next time. Oh, this is going to be really pretty. I'm really excited about this one. I do think the color change is going to be slower now that I've gotten through that very first pink portion because it looks like there's a lot of this fuchsia before the next color. But we'll see. Hmm, so I have been working on, well, I've got, let's see, the Power Puff Jacket is going to be my next release, which I'm really excited about because when I created the Power Puff Jacket, and that's my big, crazy, chunky one, that's this one right here. So I used um, like a size 7 Chanel yarn meant for making like blankets and stuff. But I really liked the challenge of taking a yarn that's not made to, to be, um, it's not made for wearables. You know, you're really supposed to use it for like blankets and stuff. But um, I really wanted to make a wearable out of it. It's like a challenge, you know. Um, and being the self-proclaimed jumbo yarn queen, um, I felt like it was, it made sense for me to try it and, you know, see what happened. And I actually am really, really happy with the shape, you know, for being such a bulky yarn, still creating such a unique shape and a functional shape uh, for, and again, it being able to make it fully size inclusive, having testers of all sizes. Um, I'm really excited to release it. I don't know if it's going to do as well as some of my other patterns because it is such a, um, a specific style, you know, uh, but I'm... I'm excited to release it and I think I'm going to be able to release it Friday. So I think this Friday is when I'm going to release the Power Puff Jacket. And I did get requests to make the Power Puff Jacket into a mini version. And I think that I think that that's going to be the next call for testers. So if you have been wanting to test for me, uh, I know that the weather's warming up, but I know that if I don't go ahead and put this test out there, that it's just going to sit on the back burner. And if I wait until the weather cools off again, um, you know, I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget about it, you know. So I'll probably do a call for testers this week for the mini puff jacket. And the mini puff jacket is a very, very similar shape to the power puff, but I use a size six Chanel yarn instead of the size seven. So you're going to use a smaller hook size um, and the smaller yarn size, but it has a very, very similar shape. Um, but be on the lookout for that because that's going to, I'll announce that test on Instagram. So if you follow me on Instagram, that's usually where I do all of my uh, testing calls. So I'm excited about that. I just got it photographed yesterday. We've had some pretty gross weather, but um, there was like a break in the storm. So I went out and got, uh, got photographs of the mini puff jacket so that I can do the call for testers and finish up the pattern. Um, but I got so many good pictures of the power puff jacket from testers. It made me even more excited just to be able to see, 
you know, some of the testers use different yarn. So that was really cool seeing the same style with a whole bunch of different types of yarn. Um, yeah, I'm excited. I think it's going to be great. So be on the lookout. That's going to release Friday. That's my goal. Um, the other thing that I've been working on is I just posted about it on Instagram and I think I posted it in my Facebook group. And if you guys aren't in my Facebook group, I would love to have you join. Um, I believe the link to my Facebook group is in the description of this video. Um, so you can check that out and join in. The Facebook group is really fun because I feel like I can post more things that are, uh, a lot more casual than Instagram. You know, Instagram is... Uh, very polished with like the pictures, you know, I don't tend to share um, as many progress photos and things. So I get to do that on the Facebook group and uh, I get to do different polls in the Facebook group. That's really fun. That's actually the Dobby cardigan won the poll in the Facebook group to, to be the next crochet along. So um, I did it in a few other places. I polled a few other, um, like I, I did a poll in my Instagram stories and I did a poll for the Pink Sheep Hook Club members. So if you buy our hooks, um, we have a hook club for people who have bought our 3D printed crochet hooks. Um, I polled them and I think that the Tonks hoodie won everywhere but the Facebook group. Uh, and the only reason I didn't do the Tonks hoodie is because of the weather getting warmer and because I already have two of them. And since I haven't gotten rid of the two of them that I have, uh, I figure I don't need to make another one and then have three Tonks hoodies. So I don't tend to wear my pullover sweaters as much as my cardigans. I wear my cardigans a lot. Uh, I don't tend to wear my pullover sweaters as much. Um, I think because I like to layer, you know. Uh, so if I layer under a pullover, I just feel like it's a little much. Whereas if I layer under a cardigan, it's just like wearing, you know, wearing a jacket or something. So I don't mind that as much. I feel like I'm making good progress. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish the whole back panel. I'm trying to move pretty quick. If you guys are following along, let me know where you're at. Uh, if you are working through the back panel with me. Thank you, Ellen. I see that you shared the, the link. And let me check through my comments real quick. And I'm sorry if the video shakes a little bit. Um, that's because it's attached to the table and I'm moving the table. Elizabeth says, my son kept trying to steal my power puff. I've heard that, that that's a, I think that happens with a lot of my tests. A lot of people's kids end up stealing, uh, stealing theirs. Um, hey, Lita. Lita says, caught your live today. Yes. Julie says, no apologies. Thanks for adding the extended sizes. Yes. Um, yeah, that is definitely my, that is definitely my goal. Um, it may not be perfect, but I'm learning. And I don't think a lot of people know, you know, it takes, um, I try to give my testers anywhere from five to six weeks to complete their tests. So, you know, it may take me, let's say, give or take two to three weeks to actually design a pattern because, you know, there's a lot of like frogging and stuff happening um, when, uh, when you do designs. So like the design I'm working on over here, this is the, let's see if I can show you guys. This is my t-shirt yarn cardigan that I'm working on. So I'm making it out of t-shirt yarn and you can see the sleeve is done in a different one because I was trying to do a little tutorial on how to add the ribbing to the sleeve after the sleeve is finished. Um, which is an awesome technique that I'm surprised I haven't used more often, but I think it's just because even for a beginner, it might be confusing. So I'm trying to figure out the best way to do like a video tutorial or something to help people understand how to do that. Because once you get the hang of it, it's really easy, um, adding the ribbing after, um, without having to sew it on, you know, but, uh, I lost my train of thought. Oh. So I've been working on that t-shirt yarn cardigan for at least two weeks. Um, and I've had to frog back the sleeves a couple of times trying to figure out because it's very stiff, which is kind of cool because it gives it a very different look. So that was kind of my goal was um, I want to create a cardigan that um, has kind of a funky fit, you know. Um, and I think it will also 
um, soften up as I wash it. So that's, that's part of the goal is, you know, even though it's stiff now, it is almost 100% cotton. It's like 90, 90 to 95% cotton, and it's got a little stretch to it. So I'm guessing it's got some spandex or something in there um, or some elastic, whatever. Uh, so I'm hoping it will soften up, but for now it does give it kind of a cool shape, which I think is kind of fun. You know, I'm, I'm looking for funky and functional items where, you know, I think it would be a really fun statement piece for the summer. So over like a tank top and some jeans or something. And it gives me very funky nineties vibes with the colors. So I feel like the different shape will will lend to that. So I'm excited about it. Um, and it's using some new techniques, you know, adding the ribbing, uh, on the sleeves is new for me. Um, but it's made very similar. The body of it's going to be a lot like the Luna or the Dobby. So, and I mean, part of me was like, okay, are people going to get tired of the same construction? Uh, with just different elements, but I don't think so because the fit is so good. You know, when you construct it that way, I feel like the cardigans really stay in place well. So, you know, I would rather stick with a construction technique that works really well and fits really well versus using a different construction technique just to use a different construction technique, if that makes sense. Um, I am interested in doing a top-down sweater at some point because I haven't made one, but I also want to make sure that I figure out how to make, how to ensure that the fit is going to work for a top-down because I've seen some raglan sweaters um, that are, you know, they say they're size inclusive, which is great, but it looks like if they lift their arms up, it's going to pull really bad because of the placement of the sleeve. So everybody is modeling it with their arms down you know, and that's why I want to make sure if I make a top down that it's not going to have a fit that's not extremely functional and fully mobile. Um, so that's why I haven't done one yet because I need to, um, I need to get that down. I need to make one first. That's, that's what I need to do. Um, and I do, I bought, um, I bought a pattern from I think it's Journey Chanel Designs. Is that her name? Did I say it right? I bought one of her size inclusive top down patterns because the fit is really nice. So I want to see how she does her increasing for the sleeves because that's the big thing uh, is figuring out where the increasing needs to go and the sizing to make sure that the sleeves land where they're supposed to for all the sizes. Um, and hers looked like it laid really nice on everyone. So I purchased that pattern so that I can see um, how her construction technique works for that one. And I think, I think that will help me get a basic idea of, you know, how I would need to do that if I were to make my own version of a top-down sweater. So I did see a couple of people say that they're on rows four and five, so I don't feel as bad. <laughs> I don't have anyone, I don't think anyone has finished their back panel yet. This might be a longer crochet along. I think the Luna cardigan was six sessions. Uh, this one might be more, and I think it's more about the fact that it is a smaller hook, so it's gonna take me a little bit longer. But I still feel like it's important for me to do all of these on the live because that really shows how long it takes to do it. Uh, you know, even if you don't wait on me, you can. I know you have other projects. I know you have other projects. I think we all have other projects that we can work on. So if you want to wait, you can. You, know, you can work on something else in between and continue working on it with me. But you can jump ahead if you want. You know, I know a lot of people, when I did the Luna cardigan, they, they skipped ahead and I had a few people that made like two Luna cardigans or more in the time that it took me to make one. Let's see, Ellen says, make so much if you take the time, spend the money, if you want your garment to be functional. Um, 
Emma just finished row four. Elizabeth just started row 11, but I'm making the smallest size. I'm sitting in my car waiting for my mom to finish an appointment. That's the perfect time to do that. I used to take mine to all, all of my appointments and stuff. I would bring my crochet. So I'm on row one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm on row eight, so that's not too bad. Well, row nine. I'm working on row nine. So technically, if I was doing the color change, I would be on the last row of the first color. Uh, but I have started to see, see the next color change. So this is like a lime green. It kind of looks yellow on the thing, but it's like a lime green color. But this is gonna be real, a really good color for spring, I think. So I'm excited about it. But I think that's all I'm working on right now. The t-shirt cardigan that I'm working on is actually a um, collaboration with Hooked Yarn. So it's H with three O's. So H-O-O-O-K-E-D. Um, and it is their recycled t-shirt yarn. Um, and they said they'll work with me again. I don't know if they forgot that, that they had sent me this yarn. I don't think they did, but I think they just said that they'll sponsor another design once I'm done with this one. So that's exciting because um, I think that will be a really fun yarn to use in the summer. Um, you know, I, I like to stick with, I want to figure out the best way and I'm still learning, you know, this is our, this is going to be me and my husband's first year doing this completely full time working on pink sheep. So figuring out how to continue to use bulky and super bulky yarn in the summer, you know, what are the projects that I'm going to make? Um, what are some of the things that we're going to do? And we're definitely going to do the DIY hook challenge again. That's going to be coming up in the summer. So that's really, really fun. Uh, if you guys have, don't know what that is, you can search on my YouTube channel and see all of the information there, or you can go to my website, therealpinksheepdesign.com, uh, and you can hover over the tab that says crochet hooks, and there's a drop down. And in the drop down, it'll give you the option to click on the DIY hook challenge. Um, and you can read all about it. But it was really fun. We're going to do it again this year. So we're excited about that. Um, but I need to figure out what patterns I'm going to do. I definitely want to do another bag. Uh, I have two bag patterns right now that I did last summer. And those are the Mariner crossbody bag, which is my favorite. The one that I made using Hobie bungee mini yarn. Um, once it gets warmer, that's the only bag I carry like out on my errands and stuff. Um, and then I made the Babe with the Yarn bag, which is a larger tote bag, um, that can fit a lot of yarn in it. <laughs> um, but it's more like a grocery type bag. Like it's, it's bigger. It's like a beach bag. It looks like a beach bag, I think. Um, but there's that one and I used the Hobie ribbon yarn for that one. Um, so I don't know. I feel like I should do another bag for sure. Uh, maybe pick a completely different shape than the ones that I've already made. Um, I've thought about doing a backpack. So like one of those little slouchy drawstring type backpacks. I think that would be really fun to do in the summer out of like a t-shirt yarn or a ribbon yarn. I think ribbon yarn would probably be better for that. Um, what else? I don't know. I need to figure out what else to do. Let me know if you guys have ideas. I kind of want to do a water bottle holder because um, I feel like that would lend itself very well to a chunky yarn. I think that would be really cool. But it would be nice to have a few more ideas that I can do with chunky yarn because I don't know if I'm going to do a lot of wearables. I really think that my focus for wearables is going to remain on, uh, it's going to be super bulky yarn, but it's going to be mostly cardigans mixed in with some different wearables because there's still so many different kinds of cardigans and things that I want to make. Like I do want to do a longer style. Um, I know that I want to do like a bathrobe with burnout blanket yarn, like a, like a lounge robe, but I think that'll be when it starts to cool down again. But I think that would be really fun with like the tie and everything. Okay, we got five minutes left. 
which means I should be able to finish at least two more rows. We'll see. So I didn't, I didn't meet my goal. I wanted to uh, try to finish the back panel. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's okay. Uh, I forget how much longer it takes even just using a 10 millimeter hook, you know, to make things. That's why my go-to has always been a 15 millimeter hook. Oh, I wanted to ask you guys. Um, so I posted my first video yesterday. That was just me working um, on, it was actually, I'm working on my t-shirt cardigan out on the porch. Um, we have a lot of birds and things out here. And I remember I used to go live outside and I probably will uh, moving into the future too. Once it warms up, I'll probably go live out on the porch um, just because it's so nice. But I was working out there and I was like, this would be great to just post as like an ambient kind of video because you can hear the birds chirping and like, it's just neighborhood sounds, you know, you can hear some cars going by and things like that. But, um, you know, I know a lot of people like to have that kind of stuff on, especially if you don't have, you know, those kinds of noises at your house and, or if it's a really nasty day outside and you want to pretend like it's not, um, it's a shorter video. It's because it was the first one I tried. Um, and I had to cut out a lot because, um, my dog would be like running back and forth and it would be really loud. You could hear his like tapping, you know, back and forth on the porch. Um, so if you watch the video closely, there's a couple of times where he magically moves from like one place to another because I've cut out the portion where he's like running around on the porch. Um, but, uh, I think it's like 15 minutes maybe, um, of just me working in the afternoon. Um, and it's really pretty, like the lighting was really pretty. I've thought about doing it like as the sun goes down, you know, so maybe it'll show the, the sun sunset, but, um, I don't know if I should do more of those or not. You know, I don't know if I should actually take the time to do those. Um, I've also thought of one of my favorite music genres, if I'm trying to focus is like jazz like smooth jazz, like my husband calls it elevator music, but, um, I've thought about doing some videos of me crocheting and having that playing. I don't know. Just trying to think of different ideas for my YouTube channel. I'm going to keep doing tutorials, keep doing my lives, um, and things like that. But I'm also trying to make sure that I continue pushing my watch hours. Uh, I think I'm at, I think you have to have 4,000 watch hours to get monetized and I am still just under 3,000. So definitely trying to get some more videos out. Okay. Let's see. Yeah. I love how this is changing. You guys can see. I think that's pretty cool. What am I at? 58 minutes. I feel like I'm working pretty quick. I can make sure I didn't miss any comments either. So I have to move up to see them. Uh, top down raglans require a chain under the armpit. Yes. So I have, I have done that. I'm doing a top down cardigan right now. And I got to the chain under the armpit um, that will differ in count and length depending on the size. Um, what is on my hoodie? <laughs> yeah, that's what's on my hoodie. So I sell these in the shop. <laughs> sell them in my Etsy shop and my bonfire shop. Yes, very honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have these and like stickers and keychains and stuff too in my Etsy shop, but this has been one of the best, one of the best sellers for sure. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so a backpack, people like the backpack idea and, and yes, the bucket bag backpack. That is what I meant, Julie. Yep, exactly. Um, a mushroom bag for mushroom hunting, a picnic blanket, lawn cushion, the robe, and I don't think the robe will be heavy, actually, Julie. That's why I want to use blanket yarn. You know, I did the, um, 
made my winky jacket out of blanket yarn and it's doubled and I don't think I would double it for the robe and the winky jacket it it's pretty heavy when I pick it up because it's doubled uh, but when you wear it it's not and I think that's what's so interesting about you know blanket yarn out of all of the other super bulky yarn it's gonna be the lightest so I figure it would be the best for something like that what else it may not be perfect, but I'm learning. <laughs> yes, quote of the month. And it's so true. You know, I think that's, I think that's the most important thing. You know, there's a lot of designers out there. Um, and I think what's important is finding designers who are always trying to continue to learn new things, who are pushing themselves, who are listening to what people are saying. Um, and what people are requesting. And even if they don't make changes right away, that those changes are there in their mind and it's something they want to work on. You know, I had people asking for months, if not a year, for me to offer print-friendly patterns uh, along with my regular patterns, because most of my patterns are super colorful. Uh, so they suck up your ink. So if you like to print patterns, you may not want all of that color. And so, you know, at first it felt overwhelming because I was like, I don't have time to go in and redo these patterns. And, you know, because if you can't just take the pictures out, you know, because you have references to the pictures, so you have to go through and cut that part out and create a separate PDF. And it felt overwhelming. And so I was like, you know, I, I kept telling people, I'm going to keep this in mind. Like, don't think, I don't want you to think that I'm just not going to do it. Um, and starting the very first design that I released in 2022, I offered a print friendly version and every other design I've released in 2022 has had a print friendly version with it. So it's two different PDFs you can download. And now I'm slowly starting to go back in like with the Dobby cardigan, I updated the sizing to make this one fully size inclusive. And then I was actually, I was also able to add the print friendly version, you know, so it's just being aware of the places where you can grow and, and making it a priority. Um, you know, there are patterns still in my Etsy shop now that are not fully size inclusive. And, you know, you definitely, it's easy to feel, you know, like I have a lot of people that joined my Facebook group um, just in the last couple of weeks because someone mentioned in another crochet group on Facebook that I have size inclusive patterns and it makes me feel bad to know that I still have patterns in my shop that are not fully size inclusive and it feels overwhelming to try to revisit them but I feel like if I do it slowly and I just keep it on my list of things to work on that it's going to be worth revisiting them and you know, working on them to make sure that they are as, as high quality of a pattern as they can be, you know, um, even the dot, like the Dobby cardigan doesn't have a measurement chart and all of my new ones do. And that's something that it may be possible for me to do that. Um, if you guys create your Dobby with the new instructions, um, I may be able to use photos that you guys submit. So if you want to submit your finished Dobby, um, I may be able to try to put together a measurement chart for it, but it's little stuff like that, trying to continue to be better and grow. Um, and look, I got my fourth color change. So that's exciting. I think this is where I'm going to stop for now. And I am going to double re double check my gauge here. Let's see if I'm still over. I think I'm sure I will be, but um, let me use my gauge square because this is big enough now. If you haven't seen our gauge squares, we did put more of our flexible ones in the shop. So these are a four by four square. They have holes for measuring hooks in the side. So let's say this is a 17, but if you didn't know the size, you could find the 17, which is right here, and you can put the hook in there and that will tell you if that one's because it won't fit in here. It's not going to fit in there without bending it. Um, and then if you put it up here, it, it moves up and down. So that'll help you measure your mystery hooks. And then it's got the four by four square. So let me try this just because you guys are 
here. Let's see if this works. I'm going to move this arm around. Let's see. Okay. So if I move the arm and then let's see if I do this and I need to flip my screen. Let's flip the screen. There we go. Look at that. Okay. Now if I can get this to hold right here, is that holding? Ooh, looky there. Looky there. Okay. This is perfect. This is what I wanted with this arm because that'll make it easy. Okay. So what you do with this is you set it down and you make sure it's right on the front of that first stitch. And actually we can move it down. So that's the top of this row. And I'm sorry if you can hear my husband in the background. He's on the phone with his dad. Um, okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half. Yep. So I'm supposed to have, am I supposed to have nine? This is going to be much bigger than it's supposed to be. Yeah. I'm supposed to have nine stitches. Yeah. <laughs> Don't have nine. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm it's like seven and a half. So when that happens, you have to know that your sweater is going to probably be larger than, <laughs> than it says if you check your gauge. But let's check our rows. Let's see if it's also going to be longer than it's supposed to be. So I'm going to start at the very top of this row and count down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. And I'm supposed to have seven rows. So I'm actually on gauge for my row height. So it's going to be the length that it's supposed to be, but it is not going to be the width that, that, that it's supposed to be. Um, and I hope that's helpful for you guys too. If you're like, like I never used to check gauge. Um, I always kind of would just wing it and I'm not like trying to squeeze it together, you know, so that, so that maybe, maybe I can fit more in here. I think we've got eight now. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah, see, now I've got eight if I just kind of squish the fa fabric together and cheat a little. Um, but I'm excited. That's okay. Like I said, it'll be a little bit wider, but, you know, it'll just be a little bit more oversized in the body, um, you know, and I can always shorten my sleeves a little bit. So if the sleeves end up a little longer than they should be, that's a super, super easy fix. Um, so I'm not really that worried about it. All right, let me flip this back around. Whoop, looky there. Oh, that works so good. That makes me happy. Okay, let me move this back around. Oh, this way. Let's go this way. I do feel like I take you guys on a, a ride every time you join into these, though. This doesn't want to turn. There we go. Okay. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to call it for our first session. Um, I hope you will have the patience to wait with me through this. This will be a longer uh, live, uh, but we can chat about things. This, you know, this is the part where I don't have to get specific because it is just, we're just working a square right now, you know, so that makes it easy. Um, but if you do have questions, you can always put them in uh, the chat later, uh, especially if you are watching the replay. Um, I'm so thankful to have all of you on the live, but if you can't come live, I totally understand. It is noon on a weekday, um, so, you know, not everybody can take a lunch break or be able to, uh, to tune in. But I am going to save these. Um, there will be a playlist specifically for the Dobby Cardigan Crochet Along so that you can watch it later too if you if you need to. Um, let me make sure. I, I don't want to miss anything. Started to watch, but then you went live. Started to watch it, but then you went live today. I'm not sure what you were watching. Something that I said to watch. Maybe the outdoor thing. Um, lawn cushions and picnic blankets are really cute ideas. That's true. A backpack would be cool. Uh, we all need to binge watch peak sheet videos. Um, what about a chunky raw, raw skirt? Send me what you're thinking because I'm not sure. Uh, Michelle says, love that sweatshirt. Yes. And like I said, these are, I, all of my shop links are in the description of the video. So if you want to see, I have I have 24 apparel designs now. Didn't realize I'd made that many, but that is my apparel shop, my bonfire shop. Um, 
I think now the description of the video probably says the real pink sheep design.com slash merch because you can get to my bonfire shop through that and you can see all the different options that I've got. Uh, but yeah, 24 apparel designs now. Ellen says, you'll get there. Love the care you put into your patterns. Thank you. I definitely try. Uh, let's see. Love the new camera arm. Thank you. Uh, hopefully I'll continue to get better at it. I know that it can still be a little crazy. So I appreciate you guys sticking with me <laughs> as I get it all figured out. Um, Alan, Ellen, have a great day, everyone. Uh, crochet on. Don't forget to visit the Facebook page to see everyone's. Yes. So join my Facebook group. Um, if you want to connect, share your progress, see what everybody's working on. That's a great place to start. Um, the second session of the Dobby Crochet Along is going to be over on my Instagram page. So it's instagram.com slash pink sheep design. Um, and I will be working on the rest of the back panel over there. If you don't have Instagram, don't worry. I always upload my Instagram photo. I mean, my Instagram videos to um, YouTube as soon as they're over. So you don't have to miss it. You can still put your comments in. I, I always go back. If you've commented on a video, I try to go back and, you know, still interact with you guys. But if you're on Instagram, um, I am gonna, I'm gonna do a, um, what's it called? Uh, I'm gonna schedule it on Instagram. So when you go to my page, it'll actually be listed at the top of my, uh, my feed. So you can set a reminder. Um, but I will be live this coming Friday, 12 p.m. Central Time, part two of the Dobby Cardigan. Um, so be sure to check it out. And then part three will be back on YouTube. So it's Tuesday and Friday that I go live and it's always 12 p.m. Central Time. Um, so you can set your reminders if you'd like. Um, but yes, be sure to like this video. If you haven't, um, you can subscribe to my channel and it will alert you when I'm going to go live. It'll alert you when I post, um, you know, schedule another live video. Um, so that'll make it easy. Um, but I appreciate you all joining in and don't forget to message me on Etsy if you need the updated version of the Dobby cardigan. Uh, and I can send that to you guys uh, within the next day or two. So, all right. Uh, should I miss a comment? Have a great day. Yes, have a great day too, Nancy and Ellen and everyone who joined in. Um, thank you so much. And until next time, happy hooking.